welcome back to another episode of Exponential Africa. We were at the, the Singularity U South Africa Summit for the third year at the beautiful Kailami Racetrack, and we are fortunate enough to be sitting with a, an incredible human being, Tilly Lockie. Tilly Lockie's life has been positively impacted by advances in robotics and technology. From the UK, Lockie serves as a true source of inspiration and possibility. She was diagnosed with meningococcal at a young age and sadly lost both her arms. She now has hero arms made by Open Bionics, which are completely 3D printed and fully customizable to suit her needs. Tilly, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me, I'm really excited. So the first time I actually saw you was on a live stream where you were having a conversation with the Dalai Lama. Yeah. And I couldn't stop watching. It was so inspiring to, 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 you know, to see how excited he was to meet you yeah. and just the conversation you guys were having. How was that? It was absolutely insane. Obviously, he's such an inspirational, well-known figure. And it was just, I have no words. We were just, they were like, oh, Tilly, we want you to come down to Amsterdam with Singularity U. I've done a couple of events in Amsterdam with Singularity U. And they said, well, this time we're going to have the Dalai Lama there. And I was just shocked because I know who he is. I think everybody knows who he is. And then when we went to the venue, we were in this amazing church, the Dean Newey Kirk. And it was just so stunning. And I remember him coming down the aisle and he didn't actually see on the live stream, but he was high-fiving everyone. And so I was there with my hand out, ready to give him a high five. And as soon as he saw me, he was just like, wow. And we just had that instant connection. He was, cause he's not a huge fan of technology. He doesn't use much social media. Well, none at all. He yeah. doesn't really watch TV other than the news at three o'clock in the morning, but he saw them. And it was just a really good event where we were talking about how technology can help people and technology and compassion. That was the theme. So it was just a great experience. Yeah, I remember him saying that, you know, technology can help save humanity. He was very positive about uh, embracing technology yeah. in the future. Yeah. So let, let's talk a little bit about uh, these hero arms from Open Bionics. How long uh, have you had them? And um, do you want to tell us a bit about them? Yeah, so I got these specific hands in January and these were gifted to me by 20th Century Fox. And they were gifted to me um, in London. I had no idea about it. And then they told me that they wanted me to go to the world premiere and walk down the red carpet, but it was blue in this case. and. It, I just had no words. All I could say was, what? Because I was just so amazed and just shocked, really. But it was one of the most amazing experiences of my life. I remember I was shaking with excitement when I was there. So yeah, I got these ones in January off them. So I'll never forget the day where I actually received them. But they are inspired by the movie Elite Battle Angel. So I don't know if anyone's seen it, but in the movie it's Elite... James Cameron's new movie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the movie Elite, she's got like a really cool robot body and they wanted to replicate them in humanity. So I've got the exact replica of Elite's hand, but for kids in real life. So it's pretty awesome. Yeah, I watched that movie on the plane and then uh, <laughs> then I found out the story and it was like James Cameron is probably, you know, one of the greatest filmmakers that has ever lived. Yeah. And uh, I think it's, it's just extraordinary that, you know, he came and uh, met with you and, and worked with you on, on, on the movie. Yeah, and he was, he was really nice as well. He was absolutely amazing guy. And how do, how do, your hand, how do the arms work? Like, uh... So these hands are completely muscle operated. There are muscle sensors on the inside here and here. And they are perfectly sensitive to my strength, my muscles, because that's what they work on at the lab to make it really easy for you, because everybody's different. But basically, I think they move just like your hand would move, but you just don't really realize you're doing it because you've been doing it all your life. But basically, if I squeeze my muscles, the things will close. And if I flex, they will open. And then if I flex again, I'll feel a vibration in the arm. And that tells me that I've changed grip modes. So there are four grip modes in total. So this is just a normal close, like if you're picking up a ball or something. Here is the grasp, and I use that to pick up makeup brushes, pens, longer objects like that. And I also use that as a thumbs up. <laughs> and then if I press this button here, I have access to the two other grips, and it goes purple. And they are the pinch, good for smaller objects. And then the tripod grip mode. And this is what I would use if I was like holding a fork or something for extra support. I mean, it's really unbelievable. It's, it's really uh, extraordinary. I mean, there's almost like a new language has been created. Because yeah. you, 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 it's, it's like a new user interface. Yeah. And uh, where do you see this going in the, in the next couple of years? 
I have really high hopes for Open Bionics because they're a really startup company. They've only been going five years and I've been working with them for three of those years. And when we first got with them, they were literally working in like a shoe cupboard and there were only four of, uh, four of the workers there. And there's still, I feel like, I think all four are still working with them now, but they've expanded so much and they're now in the medical services in a lot of countries like France, Spain, Germany, not England yet, but they're going through the trials at the moment yes. and countries like that. And we're trying to expand a lot more. And yeah, there's, I think, over 100 with them now and they've just opened a new lab and they are going to be launching the opening of that lab as soon as I get back from here. So. If we can make it, that would be good. I really hope so. But. Amazing. And uh, I mean, you, you, since you since you were uh, very young, you've been you've been getting different uh, technologies, different mm -hmm. types of uh, prosthetics and yeah. bionics. How have you seen it develop over the last you know ten years? Or? It's absolutely insane. Um, we started my first ever hand I got. I was two, and they were from our national health care system in the UK. And I never want to say anything bad about the NHS because. They are the people who saved my life when I was battling with my meningitis when I was a baby. And they've helped me a lot with leg problems, all sorts that have stemmed from the septicemia. And so I never want to say anything bad about them, uh, but their prosthetics weren't, weren't ideal. I couldn't physically operate it. I was scared of it. I thought of it more of a weapon than a hand. As much fun as it was like chasing around my sisters, pretending I was Captain Hook or something, <laughs> they were just, weren't the best and they didn't help me at all so we moved on from that and then 10 years down the line here we are with 3d printed multi-grip hands it's almost like we're upgrading ourselves as humans yeah. and 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 with the, the this new type of positioning around the prosthetics it's it's you you are you want to get upgraded what was classed as a disability is now an advancement and i just feel like that's so crazy, bearing in mind what prosthetics were like 10 years ago. It's just moved so quick. Wow, so inspiring. And I mean, what is, what is your hope for the future around uh, Bionics? I have a lot of hopes for the future. As I said, I've got really high hopes for the team. They're doing so well. They're so new. Five years these were made, it just makes me imagine what could they be like in another five years? Could they have lasers in the hands? Could they have projectors? Because I was really optimistic when I started working with Open Burnix. I rocked up in the lab with this huge vision board and I was like, right, I want Bluetooth speakers in the hand. I want music. I want like a personal assistant on, in there, like um, Siri and an iPhone. So you'd be like, because they couldn't, my school couldn't take my hands away from me. That was the, the thinking behind it. So if I was doing like a maths assessment or something, I could be like, hey Siri, what's the answer to this question? And no things like that. So I was definitely very optimistic back then. Uh, but I feel like in five years, it's going to happen. And I, I think so. I mean, Ray Kurzweil, one of the founders of Singularity University, says that by 2029, uh, the computational power will be so strong, we'll connect our brain, our, ne our neocortex to the cloud being able to access that information at, at you know, really fast yeah. speeds. So you could, it could be exactly the same uh, in your arm or you know, in different parts of the body. Yeah. So it's very exciting. Yeah, it is. So thanks so much. We can't wait to see you on the stage yeah. and, uh, and be, be uh, here again back in South Africa. Yeah, thank uh, we've, you. We've run out of time, so I really hope you enjoyed that episode. Make sure to like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, can we, have a, can we have a handshake? Awesome, that's amazing, eh? Wow. Thank you. And a thumbs up. Cheers. Keep smiling. <laughs>